Hello again, YouTubers. Welcome back for another episode here in Retro Cave of Wonders on Retro TV. Now, last episode, we started to talk about a Super 8 movie film. And today, we're going to continue that with taking a look at Super 8 movie cameras. Now, if you're in the market uh, just for a bit of fun, or if you want to start filming some professional film to add to your digital production, then um, let's take a look at uh, what you can expect. Now, you've got to ask yourself this question, why do I need one of these cameras for? Well, of course, as you already know, you're looking at one because you either want to have a play around with it to see what all the fuss is about, or you might have been filming before, and you might want to go further into a big, deeper production. Now, of course, we know it can be a little bit costly if you're doing big productions on Super 8 today. But mind you, it's still a good format, and I started this format back in the in the days when I was a young filmmaker as at the time video cameras were just far too expensive for any of us to buy so we naturally went for the film route and it looked a lot better too not only that if you're filming on Super 8 you can be more creative with it than you can with digital sure on digital cameras you can put overlays and laps and all this type of stuff on your computer whether the camera itself you can do it in the camera mostly so anyway let's start from the bottom and to the top of the range of Super 8 cameras. Now there are literally thousands of cameras available on eBay and various uh, different auction sites, uh, boot sales. You might even find one in your granddad's basement. You never know. And that's where the best place to find some of these cameras. So at the bottom of the range, Kodak in the time from the 60s onwards up until the 80s I think, they developed their Kodak Instamatic camera. Now, Instamatic is what it is. You point, you shoot, and that's it. So let's take a look at some of these. Right, I have a Hanimax version of the Kodak Instamatic camera here. As you see, it's pretty simple, and it was very compact for the time. So dads in the 70s and 80s were loving these style of cameras. They didn't have to fumble with anything. There's no focus on here. There's no apertures, nothing to set except for point and shoot. And the only one function you had on here was your daylight filter. That's the only thing you had to do if you were lazy or if you just wanted something simple and cheap and lightweight to carry around. Just like a big Walkman sitting on the side of your shoulder. Here. Yeah, your hip. So anyway, let's take a look at this one. Uh, you open it up, you see the cartridge place where you put your cartridge. On the front is your power button. Here is your thing called the electronic eye, which supposedly can tell the difference uh, in what type of daylight conditions the film needs to be in. And apart from that, you got it, you shoot. Now, these are very basic cameras, and they're just a little bit of fun. So let's moving on to another range of basic cameras. Now. The guys in Germany at AGFA thought, let's come up with something very clever, which is this little thing here. Now, this might look like a, a fish, um, goldfish bowl maybe, I don't know. But it's very retro -y and it's very unique to its style for the day. But they will put some thought into this camera for a basic point and shoot. For instance, the handle. Easy grip. You're never going to lose out in a hurry, are you? It is very light and compact, you can hang it off there, you had straps that came with it. This also came in a package called the Agfa Family Set. Now we're going to be reviewing that one on, an, on another show, but for now we're going to just take a look at this camera very basically. Uh, and like the other Instamatic camera, same thing, you put your film in there, and you point, and shoot. Now the only difference with this one is you can do still frame footage with that orange button, as you can hear. One frame at a time. So it's very good if you're doing or starting out to practice doing animation frame by frame. If you don't want to put big expense into buying cameras, these ones, I, I've seen my friends use these on basic animation, doing frame by frame, and they work really well. As long as your lighting conditions and all the other conditions are great. Again, it's a point and shoot camera you're not going to get uh, top-end results with any of these point-and-shoot cameras, but you are going to get results of a different kind. Uh, yeah, I like this one. It's got a big viewfinder. And uh, again, 
stationary lens. There's no focus or anything like that. It's instant focus. And again, like this one, it has your light meter built in. So you pull that open like that, grab your Super 8 cartridge, and it's as simple as that. Yes, I know my dad used to love these things. It was a great design, and uh, even today, hipster look. So moving on. So let's go into something more bigger, shall we? Now we're going to look at the middle range cameras here. Now we've got a Senkyo 800 here, as you can see here. Now, Senkyos I think are a little bit un unappreciated in the Super 8 world, as I've used many Senkyo cameras in my time, and I've never, ever had major problems with them. They do, they're well built, they're solid. This one's like built metal, very indestructible. This one's got like a hidden grip on it like that. See? Uh, nice big lens to go with it. Uh, this one's got some features on it apart from the basic point and shoot. So this one's got your telly and wide on it for auto zoom. Also has a 36 frames per second button there. And an automatic light meter here which will tell you and if you put it on automatic it will do all of its for you when it comes to lighting indoors and outdoors. Apart from that you've got your film meter on the back of this one uh, and like the other one very well, very nice and clean inside. You can tell the quality when you start moving up in cameras. So this one, you know, I can guarantee you, if you buy any Senkyo cameras, as long as they're in good condition, they will not fault you. Um, okay, they're not uh, as good quality as a Canon, but they come very, very close. So you're not going to have any disappointments with a Senkyo camera of many different models, and there are hundreds of models to choose from. Moving on, now we're going to go look into some of the bigger camera here, like this one here. This is a Magnon SD817 sound movie camera. That's right, all these other cameras before you were silent only. This one was a sound camera in its day. However, unfortunately in today's world, they don't make sound cartridges, so it's pretty pointless. However, there's a reason people buy these big uh, cameras with features on them and the big big attraction even to me is even though you can't film sound on it but you can use all the cool functions on them like fade and backlight and you know slow-mo you know if you want to really get creative with your Super 8 filmmaking regardless of the sound you can use all the cool features on these cameras to make a really good production now just take a look in here with the difference the sound camera, as you see at the bottom, will have a sound wheel. And uh, as I, you can see here, this is a sound cartridge, which is bigger than the normal cartridge. And that will go in there snug like that. But again, we can't, uh, you can't buy them anymore, so it's only silent film. And uh, you can use both cartridges. Get this one out here. There you go. You can use your silent cartridge in any sound camera and it won't make a difference to your performance. So, moving on. Oh, it's popping out everywhere. So what to look out for now in your first buying your Super 8 camera. First of all, you need some AA batteries. Some take six, some take two. Take six, you never know. Six on the big ones, probably two on the small ones. So anyway, take some of these rounds. So if you're in a boot sale or a charity shop or you're going to see a camera, take some batteries because a lot of people on eBay will state that uh, cameras untested don't have any film cannot test it. In all reality you don't need a film to test any of these cameras for their mechanics. Not one bit of film. The only time you need a film to test it is for quality in these bigger end cameras with all the features and functions. So you can test any old camera out without a roll of film and to make sure it's all running properly and this is how we do it. So for instance, we found this in a thrift shop. Now I got this for two pounds. That's how cheap cameras can be. Two pounds. So the first thing you need to do is to find the battery compartment in your camera. Now in this one, it's under this little hood here. Okay. The first thing, instantly from this little thing, can save you a lot of money and a lot of heartache in the future. So if you're looking at the battery compartment, and it is corroded out, it's got all green stuff all over your tabs, 
and there might be some old batteries in there. If there are no batteries and it's still corroded, that's a worry. Because when batteries are left in these cameras over time, the corrosion gets into them and it gets into the wires and it feeds all the way through your camera. And normally it's terminal. I've rebuilt two cameras in my time for this problem and it took me a good part of two weeks to find all the bad parts because all the corrosion goes through everything. And uh, I was lucky those cameras still work. But anyway, if it's full of corrosion, nine times out of ten, the camera is dead. You will not get it to work because that is fatal. That is terminal for your camera. However, if you found a nice little camera like this that's never been used, okay, I'm going to stick our batteries in here. And as naturally, the first thing you're going to do is hit go. Listen for it. Seems to be working fine. Okay, now let's do some visual checks. So open up the door where you put your film and take a look at the wheel in the middle. So if you hit the go button, you can see it moving around. That's a good sign. And also while you're there, check the little um, gator in the gate here that brings your food up and down. You can see that wobbling, moving up and down like that for your film movement. That's perfectly fine. Now, one of the last checks you want to do is your shutter to see if it's working perfectly. Now, a very easy thing to do with this one. Open up the door, point the camera to the light, and look straight through the film gate inside the camera. Now, this applies to any camera that you might find. So take a look up there to the light, press the go button, and you will then see a light come through the shutter. And there's another way you can check. Put the film thing up to the light, and look through the lens and you will see a clear view straight through and the shutter moving up and down. Cameras are beauty. You should also check your filter as well. Normally in some cameras you can see down the front of your lens when you do this so check your filter and normally you can see it pop in and pop out. And This one here is working fine. Now once you've done all those checks that is mechanically sound camera. And there was no hesitation to say, if you put a film in that tomorrow, you are going to make a film. Because there's nothing wrong with the camera. So that's what you need to do. So once you find that corrosion, like I said, avoid the cameras. There are hundreds and hundreds of cameras out there. Even though it might be a really good deal, top of the line camera. But if it's got the corrosion in it, you can take a chance. But normally it's fatal. So, that's how you check a Super 8 camera before you buy them. Now, as for film, you will see a lot of these Kodachrome 40s, again, on auction sites all over the place selling them. Uh, this one here is unboxed. This one here is unboxed. That's an old sound cartridge. And that's your silent cartridge, like these two here, as you saw before. Now, the myth behind the Kodachrome 40. Now, if you're thinking, oh, I'll buy one of these cheap off eBay, put it through the camera, and uh, let's make a movie and get it off the process. Now, that might be all good on that, but this film, Kodachrome 40, you can no longer get it developed. That is right. There is Kodak do not have the chemicals anymore to develop this film. I do have heard that you can get this done into a black and white format, and that is the only way you can do it, but it's an expensive process. So, these today are only good for that type of reason. If not, they're good to put on a shelf and say, hey, this is once was Super 8's big time with the 40. My advice with that, look around on the, on the internet and camera shops that stock your Super 8 stuff and go for some more modern day film because it's easy to process, you can send it away, it'll come back in the mail and there you go. Kodachrome 40, um, I'd only spend the money on it if you want to make some decorations on the shelf because you can't get a process, it's very expensive. So that's Kodachrome 40 for you. Anyway folks, I hope we covered some basis here, uh, basically on small cameras and big cameras, what to look out for if you're buying your first Super 8 camera. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this one, and stay tuned next week, and we're going to cover Super 8 projectors, and go from the basics again, to the big guns, yes, and, and tell you exactly what to look out for on Super 8 projectors. So for now, uh, have fun, and we'll see you soon. Goodbye.